out of where uh, National Religious Broadcasters is a gathering to um, learn how to share the gospel more effectively through media. And we heard an amazing, an amazing sermon yesterday morning in the worship service by Dr. Tony Evans. And, you know, where else can you be, Jim? I was just walking over here to the um, American Family Radio suite and bumped into Erwin Lutzer from Moody Church. Nice. And David Jeremiah. Both guys that you know. Um, by the grace of God. And so this is just, um, I think there's kind of a revival atmosphere around here, isn't there? I think so, and I think one of the reasons for that is because folks are becoming more and more aware that the the politics aren't going to change our country. You know, the, the, the politics aren't going to change the culture war. The only thing that's going to change politics and the only thing that's going to change the way our culture and the abyss that it's headed to is the is the revival that we, we that we as the body of Christ are praying will come. Amen. Well, you know what? I'm excited, Jim, because today is like a bucket list. Oh man. It has been on my life's to-do list for you know, 20 years. I I'm going to cut you off there for just a second because I'm going to tell you. I haven't asked anyone for an autograph before. Really? But our guest today, I'm going to ask for oh, an autograph. Same so here. So, I'll let you go now. All my Christian life, most of my Christian life, I've wanted to meet Max Licato, and I've never been able to do that prior to today. So um, Dr. Licato, pastor, author, um, really Christian spokesperson in so many ways, I know I speak for Jim and myself. We are so honored that you would be on Exploring the World well, with us today. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you here in this beautiful hotel in Nashville, and yeah. it's great to, to be on your program. Uh, I agree with you, Jim. I think that the only revival, uh, I mean, the only change that our country is going to really see comes mm -hmm. from spiritual change. Right. And and I'm not one of these folks who really gets too much, uh, too anxious about the government and about politics. I, I think, you know, we, we can't expect uh, the government to do more than the government can do. And all the government can be is a fence mm -hmm. or a bridge. It can just protect or it can help us get from point A to point B. But only when, when God comes in and shows us our purpose for being on this earth, shows us his grace, shows us that this time on, life, on this earth is so brief, we're being prepared for the next kingdom, that's when real change happens, isn't right. it? Right, absolutely. That's what we're praying for. And lasting change. Lasting change. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I read a, a, in one of Billy Graham's earlier books, he tells the story of a man that was in a big city, and somebody was on the, the corner up on a soapbox preaching socialism. And he said, you know, socialism can put a new suit of clothes on that man. Mm -hmm. And the Christians said, well, Christianity can put a new man in that suit of clothes. That's good. That's, good. That, that's, that's good. what the gospel does. It changes the heart of, of a person, doesn't it? it? From the inside out. It's a miracle. It's mystical. It's almost inexplicable. Uh, but it's undeniable. You know, it's all of that. And, and, and uh, uh, I, I think it, our challenge is just to stay focused on preaching uh, and sharing just the great news that God loves you, that he came for you, he sent his son to save you, and he's coming back again. And we just keep going back to that. That's just, that's the message of hope. You know, we play a lot of pastors and a lot of messages on AFR. We have some that are 25-minute programs. We have some that are hour programs. But you pack a lot into your 60 seconds. <laughs> and I, I think some of those spiritual nuggets that we're able to give folks are just incredible, and I have appreciated your ministry. And, and when we have done some of the extended programs that you've had over the last few years, those have been a tremendous blessing to our listeners. So we're grateful for that. Well, I sure think highly of you guys. I love what you do, and it's just great to, to connect with you. It really is. Well, I, I want to applaud uh, the fact you're, you're an author, you're a speaker, you're a public figure, but you're a pastor. Yeah. You're a shepherd of a flock, and, and I think that um, the local church, I mean, the, the home and the church are God's uh, organisms to change this world. Talk to us about the importance of the local church in the life of a believer. What a great question, uh, because the local church is that place where we discover our our spiritual gifts, and we're also able to use our spiritual gifts. Um, the church is that group of people in a community, in my case, San Antonio, Texas, uh, mm -hmm. wherever a person might live. Uh, we're the only organization that God has commissioned in that city to pray for that city. Mm -hmm. Stop and think about it. You know, he, 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 I, I believe government and the, and, and the police department and the fire department, the education, those are all servants of God too. 
Uh, but they're not given the commission that we're given, and that is to intercede and to pray for our city. Uh, and so a church is absolutely essential. We are the salt yeah. in that community, and the salt contains uh, the, the, the spread of destruction. Uh, it, it provides protection. Uh, we're light in that community. And so I think it's just almost impossible to over, overestimate the, the importance of, of healthy churches. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the devil attacks churches. I, I, th does. I really do. I, th I think that's, you know, I just, I just shake my head. It's so sad sometimes when I hear of a pastor who falls into moral failure or I hear about a church that divides. And yet I'm not surprised because, I mean, that's where the devil sets his attention. Mm -hmm. If he can divide a church in a community or if he can cause a pastor to stumble into either uh, moral failure or some type of other failure, then then he's achieved his number one goal. Well, mm. uh, uh, welcome to the program. For those just tuning in, this is Alex McFarland, Jim Stanley. Uh, we're talking with Max Licato. What an honor. Uh, and he's got a brand new book, Second Chances, More Stories of Grace, published by Thomas Nelson. I want to talk about this book, but I've got to ask this question because there's so many churches, uh, 375,000 churches perhaps in America, and I read an article recently, uh, Dr. Licato, that many are plateaued or declining. And a lot of churches are not seeing uh, new believers and seeing folks saved. Um, wh what do you say to the church that's maybe kind of um, hit uh, the doldrums and would love to see some of the, the, the move of God they maybe once enjoyed? That's a great question, and you're absolutely right. There are many churches that are not growing. Um, there are those that are wonderful exceptions in every city. And uh, to me, at least from my perspective, and I think this obviously lines up with the Bible, there's the common denominator of prayer, a prayer. When a, pra when a church becomes a praying church, mm. when a church takes seriously this privilege of, of interceding on behalf of the city, uh, so things begin to happen. Sure. I'm, I'm still uh, struck every so often. Somebody reminded me recently that, that when the church began in Jerusalem, it began after the disciples had spent 10 days in the upper room, and they were praying. They were just waiting on the Lord. And, and I, I love that quote that our tendency is to uh, preach for 10 days and uh, right. pray for three minutes. Right. But Peter preached for three minutes, and they prayed for 10 days. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so I think that's the key. We've just got to keep bringing our cities back before God in prayer. And one of the things that you mentioned there, I think, is that we, we need to begin serving those folks again. How do we do that? Give us uh, now, I mean, there are some obvious ways that we could do that, but how do we reach out to folks without offending them, you know, one, and two, to make sure they understand there's no strings attached. We just simply want to see them come to Christ. We can overcomplicate this so easily and overorganize mm -hmm. ourselves so easily when really all we have to do is love our neighbor. I mean, it really comes down to that. We love our neighbor. In our church, we challenge every person to uh, identify the five families that live closest to them uh, in their cul-de-sac or out in the country or in their dormitory room, uh, wherever they may live in their apartment building and make a list. Who are the five people who live geographically closest to you? Mm -hmm. And we're surprised how many of us don't even know those right. five people. So really the first assignment is to uh, compile that list. And then the second assignment is to pray for them every day. Just pray every day for those five people. And I tell you what, you do that, and those five people are going to sense the presence of the Lord, and opportunities right. are going to open. Well, we want to be very sensitive to your time, and we're grateful for the time you took to be with us today. Well, it went quickly. It did. Thank it you did. so much. You're <laughs> listening to Exploring the Word Thank on you. AFR Talk. We'll be right back. There's no greater feeling of patriotism and appreciation for the men and women who gave their lives for our freedom than to stand at the Tomb of the Unknown